let's talk about a very, very common um, wound repair need, and that is injuries to the hand. Uh, the hand uh, can be injured uh, in, in a huge variety of mechanisms. Um, the most dangerous of all of the hand wounds uh, occur in the, the uh, combination of a wound with a mouth. And the dirtiest of all of the mouths is a human mouth. Uh, so a fight bite I want to highlight as being the worst possible uh, wound that we have for our humans and the most difficult set of instructions uh, for the patient uh, that has to go through when their hand has come into contact with another human's mouth. Uh, we also could have a variety of mammal bites and, and uh, cats and dogs. Uh, another thing that result in penetrating uh, lacerations and wounds uh, to the hand. Um, those require, again, absolutely uh, meticulous cleansing, irrigation, and at times wound closure. Otherwise, when we talk about the hand, what's really important to get to about the hand is not what the wound looks like in our closure of skin. What's much, much more important is the functionality of the hand uh, at the end of the repair process. And what is really important in the structures of the hand are the tendons, the intrinsic musculature, the nerves, the blood vessels, uh, and, and the functionality of each of the digits uh, that gives the patient uh, the long-term recovery that they need. Our job in the emergency world is to maximize their functional recovery, uh, which means no infection, uh, no compromise of the long-term functionality of the hand, uh, a dressing and follow-up process uh, that gets them to the maximum use of their hand into the, into the future. Uh, so the skin elements of this, uh, we can kind of break out by the, the dorsal surface and the plantar surface, uh, the palmar surface of the hand. The most important functionality of the wound closure uh, comes around uh, wounds that occur on the dorsal surface of the hand and on the palmar surface of the hand. The dorsal surface of the hand, relatively tight tissue adherence to subcutaneous tissue, relatively small areas of protection uh, by, by dermis and subcutaneous fat. Uh, the skin has to come together very nicely because there's very little stretch zone available here. On the palmar surface of the hand, many more of the very important structures, including the neurovascular bundles, are hidden on the palmar surface of the hand and the digits. Uh, also very important are flexor tendons. Uh, that give us the real functionality of, of the hand that's important as a human. Uh, any involvement of the, of the flexor tendons uh, really requires follow-up by hand surgery and the ability for you to get the minimum amount potential of infection or of any foreign material left in the wound there. So general principles are a very function-focused evaluation of the hand uh, so that as you look at the hand, um, and it's very important that you look at it at the, in the mechanism of injury site. So that if it was a clenched hand at the time something came across it, you look at the wound with a clenched hand as well as moving the hand and the extensor tendons through their range of motion as you look in the wound to make sure, for example, no extensor tendon laceration occurred. So across the full functional range of the tendons is really important on the palmar surface of the hand. Uh, once again, looking, and if you can see flexor tendons here, you can almost anticipate uh, that there's involvement of the flexor tendons, uh, which then necessitates you as an emergency provider, talk to an appropriate hand surgeon, do a full functional evaluation of that flexor tendon, um, and that you do as, as extensive an evaluation, a direct evaluation that you can before you close the wound edges. Uh, so as I'm, as I'm walking through this, I'm describing the very, very important relevance of you testing and moving this hand and all of its pieces uh, through all of the necessary work that is going to go on for the patient to get the long-term uh, recovery that they want. The very last thing that we have to worry about is what the skin looks like uh, because, again, the hand, typically pretty vascular, Typically, if you don't leave foreign material in, has a lower risk of infection unless it's come into contact with the teeth of a mammal, uh, particularly the worst mammal is a human being. When we then look at the hand, 
uh, and go through its functionality. Uh, we are at another very important part of the functionality of a human hand, which is the nails. Uh, any involvement of the nail bed requires an evaluation in the nail bed itself, what the damage is to the nail and the potential damage to the nail matrix, which is the base area here uh, from which the nail grows and is very, very important. So nail ma matrix in this area down here, if there's a laceration or wound occurring into it, evaluating with the patient uh, what the functionality is needed of their nail. In many cases, we remove the nail, uh, clean it up and replace it with the patient having the understanding that there may be long-term damage to the nail matrix that you can't evaluate and that is not part of anything that you can visualize. Otherwise, recovering each of the edges uh, around the nail and the nail folds here, very important in you doing any repair. A nail bed repair, a separate lecture altogether. Uh, for our functionality of the hand though, all of the skin needs to go back together. Any potential opposition of the skin tip, as long as it's viable tissue, we bring that back together. Any flaps put in with minimum skin tension and then with splinting of the hand. Uh, so that the tissue has a good opportunity to repair itself uh, and then to scar in an appropriate position. With scarring, uh, what we want is for any scarring that occurs to leave the hand in a position of function. That position of function is one where there's slight flexure of all of the digits of the hand and of the hand itself. Uh, so that if we are doing a repair and then splinting the hand afterwards, to keep it at rest as scarring occurs, uh, we position the hand in a position of function, which is approximately in that position there. In some cases, it's also necessary to put a wrist splint in place uh, to hold the entire hand in a position of function so that scarring can occur uh, with the patient in the, in the most reliable position for them to be long-term. In then closure of the skin of the hand, uh, remembering again on the dorsum, uh, we have very little in the way of vascular supply. Any tissue that's already dead needs to be debrided away so that you have a good viable skin edge. Uh, we put it in place, uh, typically on the back of the hand, we can use vertical uh, mattress sutures to keep the skin in good place. On the palmer side of the hand, uh, relatively less of the use of vertical or horizontal mattress sutures uh, closure of the skin as appropriate, uh, and that minimizes the risk of long-term infection. Uh, we also, again, uh, back here can make some use of our, of our dressings, of steri strips and other things uh, that will allow the skin edges to come together loosely. Anytime we have a laceration that occurs over the IP joints, uh, these typically will not hold together with either glues uh, or with steri strips, uh, those are areas which we need to put uh, a nice small uh, set of sutures in place uh, over those IP creases and joints, um, and then and then again in a position of functionality with a splint on the opposite side of the joint. The hand, a very important place for us to understand uh, the relevance of what's deep down underneath, and then give good skin closure and then long-term wound care instructions and follow-up as needed for best functionality of the patient.